So, Lexi, it, it, it is like changed to the way we usually do things here on the podcast. Normally, we, we have the listeners' questions at the very end. Um, and uh, we're, we're going to kind of flip that slightly and have the listeners' questions at the beginning of this episode, uh, purely because obviously the hot topic is, 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 is the coronavirus at the moment. And uh, you turn on any news channel any any tv show at all and that's all they're talking about and that's all that my colleagues are talking about at work that's all they're talking about at my kids schools that's all they're talking about my my wife's work um so we're going to talk about it here because we know i mean i I suppose any other time of the year we probably wouldn't be that kind of concerned about it as wrestling fans um but we're only as we're kind of recording this we're only three weeks away from wrestlemania wrestlemania weekend um we're we're recording this on on friday the 13th of march so in in three weeks time uh you're gonna have uh, i suppose uh three weeks uh well just less than three weeks ago in, in in the future you're going to have the hall of fame followed by smackdown and then the saturday is going to be takeover followed by the sunday wrestlemania of course so a lot going on including all the indie stuff that's meant to be taking place over in tampa but of course the coronavirus is is kind of shutting down uh towns it's shutting down cities it's shutting down schools and businesses it's virtually put uh Italy on on lockdown as well, um, as well as other kind of countries around around the world uh, handling the situation in a similar way. I know the sporting events over here in the UK. I think uh, if I'm right in th- saying that the Premier League and uh, the Football League and uh, the Six Nations Rugby has all been put on hold for the meantime. Um, so, I mean, what was your kind of thoughts in general about the coronavirus? And, you know, has it changed any of your habits? Uh, are you washing your hands more often? I don't know. But uh, are, are you concerned about the coronavirus, uh, you know, in your everyday life? Um I guess it would be difficult not to be concerned um, because obviously there's so much misinformation going on and, you know, you you go and you see people, it's on my social media streams, like, you know, there's people taking photographs of like the toilet roll aisle in Asda and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's like, why? You add into the panic more than anything else. Um, I have... Um, OCD anyway so hand washing I have hand sanitizers ironically um, that I use just to keep safe and for now touch wood yeah. I have a good stock but it is starting to get to a point where I'm like okay what happens if yeah. what happens if um, but yeah I, I don't think you can get away from it I mean my partner came home the other day with a with a pc ready to work from home if he needs to you know and it's like okay now this is getting serious yeah so yeah yeah it's interesting isn't it it's interesting a little bit concerning there's a lot of misinformation out there and the the news story and uh, seems to change on a daily basis to be honest with you and the advice we're being given changes on a daily basis as well but as i mentioned we're three weeks away from wrestlemania and you're going to have tens of thousands of people that are going to be congregating um, on, on Tampa, Florida, um, and uh, thousands of people going to be flying from all over the world, including the UK and Ireland and around Europe, and all kind of worried and wondering whether they're going to be able to get there, whether WrestleMania is going to go ahead, whether they're going to lose money on flights, hotel tickets, whether it's going to be cancelled altogether or rescheduled. Um, now, yesterday, there was a meeting held in Tampa with uh, Tampa officials. Uh, it said that Vince McMahon was in attendance in this meeting. And one of the topics being discussed uh, was whether to postpone or cancel WrestleMania 36. Uh, during the meeting, the, the Tampa mayor uh, stated that uh, we have a few weeks until WrestleMania 36 and that a decision with regards to either cancelling or postponing the event has not been made yet and will be made in about a week's time. Um, so according to uh, Tony Maglio from The Wrap, he states that as of right now, the plan is not to cancel WrestleMania. Um, and uh, at the time of recording this podcast, um, it, it's still on, which is good news. Although there is going to be uh, another meeting, WWE officials and Tampa officials will be reconvening uh, in about a week's time to talk about the possibility of cancelling or postponing um, or, or going ahead with WrestleMania, which is what we all hope, because uh, although I'm not travelling to Tampa, you know, as a wrestling fan, I want it to go ahead 
I want to enjoy uh, WrestleMania and I want to, all the people that have bought tickets to WrestleMania and all the fringe events around Mania to enjoy it and not lose out on any money. So, as I said, we're going to kick off with, with some listeners' questions. And the first one is from um, uh, one of our good friends on Twitter, Broken But Glorious Wrestling Podcast. And they ask, uh, uh, if Tampa does cancel Mania, would moving it to the Performance Centre work? Uh, could postponing it uh, even work with uh, the current card as I don't see how the storylines can be dragged out much longer and uh, would you do Mania at a later date with a different card so I mean regarding the performance centre bit we saw NXT at the Performance Centre this week. I think it probably only had a few hundred people in there, if that. So to fit, uh, you know, uh, eighty thousand people in uh, w- would be uh, an impossibility. But although it's in that location, so I'm sure whatever happens in Tampa uh, will, will kind of you know, be exactly the same for sporting events in Orlando. But um, uh, postponing it uh, could work. But then you've got to think, you know, the current card, which is pretty much all but set now. Um, you know, would they be able to? drag these storylines and drag these matches out for another two or three months because according to news reports the virus is going to peak in about two to three months so you're talking middle of the summer um it's an interesting one isn't it but but lexi looking at broken but glorious's uh, question here um kind of have you got any kind of answers for them in terms of should we uh, drag out the current storylines um, you know is, would it be a good idea to maybe postpone and, and do mainly at a later date with a different card maybe oh I it's think an interesting one isn't it it is um, and I've been thinking about this since you sent them um, to me I think <sighs> looking at what's happened over here in the UK today on the 13th Mm. So you've got the Premier League and football in general that are suspended until, <coughs> excuse me, either the 3rd or 4th of April. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got teams like um, Everton. I know that one um, <laughs> just because just because I support them. But you've got teams like Everton that are self-isolating because they are concerned that, you know, I think we've got to be realistic and I, as much as it kills me to say it, I think common sense needs to prevail. And I think that they need to go, OK, we need to cancel it. We, as in, we need to cancel the big stadium and figure out what we're going to do after that. Yeah. For me, if you cancel it now, you would still have time to put something in place. It would be weird and it would be awful for the talents involved in the WrestleMania weekend cards to possibly go out and do it without a crowd. But you have to put the safety of everybody there first. So we, you mentioned before NXT was from the performance center this week, as I understand it and correct me if I'm wrong, SmackDown is going to come from the performance center. Ah, uh, what, uh, is that tonight? Though? Yeah, apparently. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's some conflicting reports. The last thing I read was that it was definitely coming from the performance center. So I think if you're if WWE are doing that with television shows, yeah, irrespective of you know the revenue that could be lost or whatever, they're gonna have to. They're gonna have to cancel it. Um, I mean, I did read uh, this morning that uh, Vince McMahon and co were offered 75 million to take WrestleMania over to Saudi Arabia. Mm, yeah, I read the same report. Uh, yeah. 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 And, and I was uh... like, I would be very <laughs> upset if that happened. I'm just going to put it out there. Um, you know, yeah. being, being selfish, I would be very annoyed if, 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 WrestleMania was to go international for me, of course I want it to be in Britain first. Yeah. You know. Um, but that's a different issue for a different day. There might be an article on that at some point. Um, but yeah, I think I think common sense has just got to come into play now. You know, you've got the XFL, Finney Max or the Venture, yeah. you've got the NFL, the National Hockey League, the baseball eh, not baseball, the basketball league, all of them have been cancelled it's only a matter of time yeah 
you know I, I i i think i think you're right and i think it is fairly inevitable that something <sighs> There is something drastic is going to happen and either they, they postpone the event to later on in the year or they hold it somewhere else. And it's quite interesting, you know, the first part of Broken But Glorious's question is, could they possibly move it to the performance centre? And I wasn't aware until you just said that tonight's Smackdown could be held for, from the from the PC as they did with uh, NXT this week. Um, and yeah, having a mania there, possibly without any spectators, that could be very weird. That could be very, very weird. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, who knows? And and then you got that seventy-five million dollars on the table for potentially moving it to Saudi Arabia, like another greatest Royal Rumble or, or Super Showdown. Um, but 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 then you know, are they? experiencing the coronavirus in in Saudi Arabia I don't know I I think it's affected quite a few countries around the world but I don't know whether it's struck uh, Saudi Arabia yet but still if you've got some cases in Saudi Arabia or some of the uh, you know Arab countries like that then it would be no different than uh, than hosting it in America if they're going to host it in another country that's uh, suffering with the same virus. So okay. it's very interesting. And there's so many kind of questions, unanswered questions, and uh, they are meant to be reconvening, as I mentioned in the notes earlier on, you know, with the Tampa officials and WWE officials. Um, but as you said, you know, Vince McMahon's other venture, the XFL, they've um, they've put a bit of a hiatus on their matches, as have the NFL and the NBA and yeah, uh, it's it's oh crikey, it's, it's a bit of a, a situation we've never been in before, especially regarding sporting events and mm. where there's you know large gatherings of people. Um, and uh, like you say, it's even more concerning that they believe we haven't reached the, the peak of the epidemic yet. Uh, so uh, it's very very interesting. Um, I, I think from a selfish standpoint, I, I'd still love it to go ahead um, and hope that the coronavirus is, is kind of not as bad as everybody is fearing, because like yeah. I say, there is quite a bit of scaremongering. Uh, but then, you know, when, when you kind of engage brain and you think from a common sense standpoint and you think, well, if you've got 80,000 people in a, you know, is it an indoor arena or an outdoor arena? I'm not sure, but 80,000 people all in the same place and, you know, all around Tampa for that uh, five, six day period, you know, there, yeah. there's a huge risk to the uh, to the tens of thousands of people that are there. So very, very interesting, very interesting. And then with regards to if they were to hold it at a later date, a lot of the storylines would have been played out by then. So you could see these big yeah. WrestleMania matches taking place on a Raw or a smacked out or possibly dare I say at the PC uh, yeah. so uh, then they'll have to build new storylines so um, all very interesting and uh, kind of uh, as if you know wrestling couldn't get any more weirder and wonderful than it is right now it's kind of um, and it's not necessarily about the in-ring product we're talking about but then it, it continues with uh, Aussie Lucian their, their blog and podcast uh, Twitter page they've asked uh, um, if it's a year before they find a cure to the coronavirus, um, how will it affect the wrestling world? So, I mean, you've got, you've got, uh, I think, Stardom um, in Japan. They've uh, cancelled a lot of their shows, and I think that there was one show where they uh, b- b- played in front of uh, an arena with with nobody there, no fans, um, and. I know that, uh, crikey, there's a show for OTT this weekend. I can't remember the name of the show, but it's headlined by uh, David Starr and John Moxley. And that show's yeah. been cancelled as well. It's so like Grappamania 6 yeah, or something like that. You've yeah. got it. You've got it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, how will it affect wrestling long term if, if, if it does go on for, for months? Um, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, once again, we, we can't really answer it, but it will be weird and it, it could be spell a lot more shows being cancelled or playing before an empty audience an empty arena um so that's possibly how it might affect it is more empty arena shows and i mean let's be honest there's, there's some some episodes of smackdown where they've only got fans on one side of the arena so to uh, get rid of get rid of the fans that are actually there probably yeah. would make a lot of difference but uh, they just have to do a lot of tight shots on the wrestlers and the action in the ring but uh, yeah. any thoughts on this on this question from aussie lucian then lexi um <sighs> I know that there's a lot of concern about independent wrestlers. So the independent, those working the independents like David Starr, for example, who, you know, travel around, they've now lost their income. Um, And I know that there's certain pages and certain wrestling based promotions that are, you know, on social media saying, look, you know, 
tweet or if you're an independent wrestler tweet us or give us the link to your um merchandise pages so you can still have some sort of an income and you can still support wrestling um through other ways i think with wwe wwe wouldn't be affected as much as the other smaller companies um purely because they've got tv revenue and stuff like that and they've proven before that they can they can put on shows that aren't necessarily in front of crowds so i've got two um two examples that spring to mind the rock versus mick foley yeah. um and it was a match i think that aired during the super bowl back in sort of 98 ish correct um yeah. and when they got caught up in the snowstorm probably 2015 2016 ish um and they had to do it from stanford connecticut um so they've proven that they can do it from from that perspective um and obviously now they've got the performance center you know um it might be that we don't have live wrestling for a while you know that's one way around it um so obviously you know the product is pre-recorded and it's just put out as is and it's done like a highlight package or whatever yeah um but it is frightening and we don't have the answers um you know i worry for the likes of um there's there's a wrestling promotion by me you know i worry for them because you know they don't have regular shows they don't you know, I think their shows are every sort of two or three months or whatever. They at most have 500 people there. Um, and what's going to happen to them? Because obviously, you know, they're in the same situation as WWE, which is weird. Um, you know, they've got storylines that need to be developed and yeah. moved on and stuff. So, yeah, scary times. It is. And, and uh, hopefully myself and Lexi kind of answered uh, the, you know, the, the questions there from Broken But Glorious and uh, Aussie Lucian. I think we've got a couple more questions to come up a bit, a bit later on in the in the episode, in, in the recording. Uh, but it's quite 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 a serious tone to these questions this week, Lexi. And uh, normally they're a lot more lighthearted, but uh, it is quite a serious serious topic, a serious time, um, and uh, and uh, you know, very interesting, especially when it comes to pro wrestling and a lot of the big events. And like I say, any other time of the year, it probably wouldn't matter so much. Um, but like you say, whether it's WrestleMania or whether it's your indie promotion around the corner, um, you know, it could have a big effect on on kind of people's enjoyment of wrestling, wrestlers' income. And um, yeah, but I, I think you know, common sense will probably kick in and prevail in the end. And uh, the, the wrestling promotions will be forced to do the right thing, really, for, for, their, for, for their own safety, for their fans' safety and for their wrestlers' safety. And um Go very very interesting. You, you got me got me thinking about possibly having WrestleMania at the Performance Center now. I don't. That would be amazing. That would be like having uh, uh, kind of WrestleMania on NWA Power or something, or a similar sort of setting. But uh, very yeah. very interesting. That brings us to another question that we had sent to us by uh, Ashley Clements. Now. Ashley kind of wasn't a big fan of kind of how this segment played out. He says, does uh, AEW need to work on backstage segments after what uh, uh, what this week, um, after the inner circle attacked Nick Jackson and left the scene, you had the elite immediately uh, enter on camera and not allowing enough time for the for the heels to leave and the faces to enter um, to, uh, to attend to their friend in danger after the beatdown. So I kind of thought the same, and this was even before Ashley kind of sent the question when i saw dynamite i thought well the heels had just left and within a couple of seconds you had the inner circle there now if i was one of the uh uh if i was one of the elite i would have chased after the the the, the inner circle or you know but maybe there was a there, maybe a back door that they escaped out of quickly and uh were, were gone before the elite turned up but uh any thoughts on this segment did you think the same did you have similar thoughts to myself uh when this happens uh, backstage on dynamite this week lexi um I I noticed it, um, but actually, there's there's a few ways of looking at it. One, the inner circle had the opportunity to get all members of the elite together, 
and pick them off one by one. Yeah. And sort of go, well, you know, if we if we want to take you down, we can. But for me, the time that passed wasn't really an issue. I mean, they're athletes, you know, it's possibly a small venue. We don't know the layout or, and stuff like that. One thing I picked up on, though, was when the camera panned down to Nick on the floor, I think it's Excalibur that says those doors are really heavy. And the next thing is Omega lifts it up with ease. <laughs> yeah. And it's I cool. was like, <laughs> I was like, um, okay, I, I know I'm supposed to suspend my disbelief, but when that happens, obviously not. Um, but the whole um, chaotic nature of it reminded me a bit of um, when the NWO first formed um, and they picked Rey Mysterio up and long darted him into the production truck and that scene of chaos and, you know, Macho Man jumping on the limo to try and get in and stuff like that just reminded me of that, Um, which was really nice because actually sometimes that's what I want from wrestling. I want a little bit of chaos and a little bit of, you know, ooh, dastardly deeds from the heels. So, yeah. I, I agree. And I thought the segment worked really, really well. And I thought the, the beat down of uh, Nick Jackson and the way he seemed kind of in pain and, and bloody, bleeding from the mouth, it, it looked uh, it looked realistic. And I, I quite enjoyed the segment, to be honest with you, and not, not something you see every week from a WWE product. Um, AEW are a little bit more edgy um, and they do kind of tend to show these sort of uh, backstage segments in a, a little bit more of a realistic light. But I think it worked. So I, I'm a fan of it and I'm, I'm a fan with how it played out. And it does build a little bit more excitement to this big. Uh, war game style match in a couple of weeks time as well Alexi so uh, I'm all for it definitely 